Hey guys, I'm Mark. I'm Alon. And welcome to another episode of The Next Man Up. Listeners, welcome to another episode of The Next Man Up podcast. We're excited and honored to, uh, to have you join with us for the next several minutes. As you know, we are about raising up the next generation of men of character and men of faith. And, and the topic today I'm excited about because we get to inter, in, intersect sports, which, which I enjoy, and qualities of, of fatherhood and manhood that we want to celebrate. And so excited to get into that. But before I do, I'm always honored to be able to share this platform with my friend, Alon. And so, Alon, welcome. Good to talk to you once again, brother. Yeah, man. Likewise, man. Thanks for having me on as your partner in crime. And I want to thank you for being my partner in crime as well. Absolutely. Is it crime? Um, Is it crime or is it just a good thing? It's a good thing. (laughs) It's a good thing. Absolutely. Uh, Audience, thank you for listening this week. But thank you for being, uh, downloading our stuff and our content and listening. And um, as always, we're, we're grateful. So, yeah, let's begin. Yeah, and and you know I'm I'm grateful that we're actually having this conversation because there for a minute that the technology was not really cooperating with us. In fact, it was oh. it was it was yeah. quite conspiring <laughs> against us. So I think I think we've got the the bugs worked out and uh, we, we've got it such that this is going to work. So um, so yeah so. So here's here here's what caught my attention. Um, uh, Alon, are you a hockey fan? Uh, I know. I, I, I'm i one of those fair weather guys, man. Uh, when the Boston Bruins are doing well, that's when I start cheering. But I really couldn't tell you much about hockey. Yeah. Well, I, I've I've always been an ice hockey fan. Um, grew up playing pond okay. hockey and some, some pickup rec hockey. And I was never any good. Um, but I enjoyed the sport and I enjoy following the, um, the NHL and, and, and the, you know, the local team here, the Blue Jackets is doing fairly well again, although they're, they're on the bubble. Um, by the time this episode releases, we should know whether they make it to the playoffs or not. Um, but, but they're having, they're having a, a relatively good year. And so it's good for the city. It's good for youth hockey. I just, I just get excited about the energy that a successful hockey team brings. But th- this, this topic today isn't so much about the sport as it is about the, really the dads behind the sport. You know, the, these guys okay. are, they're on another level, right? They are, they're driven. They are genetically special because they're, they're wired to play, whether it's, Regardless of the sport, you know, they're playing at the highest level possible for their sport. Yeah. And so that just sets them apart statistically, genetically, mentally. They're, they're, just, they're just high, high caliber and capacity people. But they still put their pants, mm. pants on one leg at a time. And they yes, still sir. have spouses and they still have families and they still have children and they still have lives lives outside of the office, even if the office is an ice rink or a basketball sure. court or a baseball diamond. And so I, I came across an article recently in, uh, in the local paper about the captain of the Blue Jackets. His name is Nick Foligno. And I've known for a while he's had some, some real struggles within his family, particularly with his, uh, with his daughter, uh, she she was diagnosed early in life with a uh, with a heart condition like a, a um, I don't know if the right terminology is genetic or a congenital heart issue but she had surgery when she was really young and oh, wow. um, so it, you know it, he's a he's a local guy and so his family gets local coverage and so um, I, I've known about this for a bit but what I didn't realize is just how much struggle he's had over the past year. And, you know, when, when, when these guys have challenges at home, it puts a lot of pressure on them to, to decide, am I going to be a father or a spouse, or am I going to be a a teammate? And and in this case, uh, Felino is the captain of the team. So not only is he carrying 
the the responsibility of being a a team member. He's also the effectively the leader of the team, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. So he and his family have been through a lot this year, and a- as a result of that, he got nominated for an uh, an award that um, that hockey writers like the the sports writers that follow the game they they have the ability to nominate certain players for this award and the the award is is the Bill Masters Masterton trophy and, and and it's tied to perseverance and sportsmanship and, and dedication to hockey so not so much performance but like character right how how do you how do you show up every day so he's nominated for this but part okay. of the reason why he was nominated for this award is because he's been He's been a dad over a captain for second heart surgery for his daughter, a a life threatening bout with pneumonia for his twenty two month old son, and then on top wow. of that, his his middle child had a had a broken leg for an extended period of time earlier this year. So wow. he has missed a number of hockey games. Um, and I'm scrolling through the article quickly here and I can't, I can't put a number on it, but I feel like it was nine or 10 different hockey games that he has not participated in. So about 10%, wow. of, 10% of the season, this guy has been at his daughter's side in the hospital, at his son's side at the hospital, spending the night at the hospital. Meanwhile, his team's on road trips and, and he's, he's yeah. left his jersey hanging in the locker room. All of that as context for for what yeah. I feel like is the the guy chose to be a dad. He chose to yeah. to show up as a father and to to be there to take care of his spouse and his other kids while the doctors yeah. were there taking care of the the sick child, whichever one it was at the time. And like yeah. I, I have liked this guy for a while and, and for me, this just elevates him even higher on my respect scale because of the choice that he was he was willing to make for his family. Yeah, you know it's it's it that's that's a hard one um, because at what point do you because because you you're going to work because like you're it's a way to feed your family right, right? yeah yep and. And so at what point does like it become uh the water get really mucky about how like like should you go should you be at work or should you be with your family? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think the waters get muddy is what I'm really just trying to say sometimes for for people. And since we're talking about like you know, next generation marriage, talk about men, like like the waters get muddy sometimes. You know, um, based off of a lot of reasons, right? Because of what what we're taught, what you know, we, we all have our are taught different things at home. Some of us we're taught, you know, we're supposed to be the breadwinner of the family, and some of us we're just taught like, look, if you got responsibility, do your responsibility. But no matter what, you're 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 you were taught, it 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 can get a little muddy yeah, sometimes for of sure when you should be home and or uh, uh, with your family, and when you should just Dude, you should be at work, you know? And what I love about this story is um, the line, this this guy, this guy, like, drew a line in the sand. And I'm I'm interested into, like, wh- when he did. And he literally said, I don't care what it is. I'm going to be home with my family right now. Yeah. Like, there's going to be times where I just need to be home. Even if it's, like a big game. I don't, I I want, like, I need to let you guys know that I'm going to be home. Fellas, friends, guys that I've rubbed shoulders with and I fought really hard with to get wins and I've been through losses with you guys rubbing shoulder, shoulder, coach, uh, manager, like all the way up, right? I'm going to have to be home with my family. And I think to me what the story speaks, uh, well, a lot, it speaks a lot of things. To me, the story speaks is that to have like clear, just have a clear boundary and to have a clear like line to say, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to, I got to go do this because I need to put food in my family's mouth. But this is more than 
food in my family's mouth. This is my family is going through a struggle and we need to be together right now. Yeah. And so I'm just going to yeah. go do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I think, I think like for a lot of us, we don't, for a lot of men, we don't think about that. I don't know. I think we don't think about that as human beings, period, when it comes to boundaries um, and, you know, keeping, keeping things at bay. But since we're talking about men, let's, let's talk about fathers. Let's talk about like men right now and just point out that men, it's, it is hard. We, we, I don't think we draw the line and make it clear to people that this is what's going to happen, even if it might mean like your job, even if it might mean, you know, um, uh, your paycheck yeah. uh, for this yeah. guy. I mean, he, he must, I mean, for the amount of times you told him he was out, he had to have missed some big games. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like some pretty like hardcore games where like he was probably, probably desperately needed. Whether you won or lost those games, they won or lost games, I don't know. But he sounds like he's an impact like player and he missed out on some big games. But yet he's okay with that because like he knew as a man, like Dude, this is, this is who I am. This is, this is what I do. This is part of like my principles, my values, my character. I'm home with my kid. I'm home with my wife. I'm home with my family that needs me right now because this is important. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> it is. It is cool. Like I, I, I don't, I don't know what it's like to have the, the mindset of a professional athlete. I just don't, you know, I, I'm not, no, I'm not no. wired that way. I haven't experienced it. And I, I know their compete level is off the charts. And, and I, I know that when a team is functioning well, it, it's almost as if it's family, right? Like we're here to support each other. We're in the trenches. We're, we're fighting together. And, and to be able to separate yourself from that and realize that there are other priorities to, to clarify what those things are and then to choose them. It, it's, cool. I, I just, again, just like my hat's off to him because I, I know these guys live to compete. They live, to, they live for the challenge and yet it's a job and the job will come and go. The, the, the time with family, you can never get back. Now, this is a bit of an extreme, right? Like, yes, he's working and it's putting food on the table and really it's putting food and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of food on his table, right? No, nobody's nobody's yeah. whining for the professional <laughs> athlete that lost a little bit of income. Um, and yeah, this yeah. is an extreme situation too where his kids are literally in the hospital with major surgery or seemingly on death's door but there's nothing yeah. there's nothing that he can do while he's there to fix the problem right that these kids are in the hands of the doctors so on one hand yeah. it could have been like hey there's nothing i can do i'm just going to keep playing i'm needed more over here but he made the choice to oh. to be with those that did need him the 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 wife mm-hmm. and and the other kids and to spend the night in the hospital at the side of his his little one struggling through pneumonia, it just speaks volumes to the, to yeah. the character and the, and the priorities a- and yeah. his willingness to set aside the job, even the job of yeah. captain of a professional hockey team, willing to mm-hmm. set that aside to be where he was needed when he was needed. It's, it just, it's stri- I mean, it's, I love it. I just love it. I guess is what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yeah. There's like a, there's, I mean, you know, speaking of practical and whatever, um, cause we don't know, right. What it is being his shoes, but like, you know, I, I could think of times like for me, like where, where something like that be, does become practical. Like, you know, I think so, uh, throughout a lot of jobs in our earlier part of our marriage and, um, me and my wife, like, you know, if we, I don't know, I, I just grew up with a sense of like your job comes first. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, that that's where you get your paycheck, buddy. Like don't leave money on a table. Like <laughs> yeah, one way you don't leave money on a table is you don't call off. You don't uh, ask for a day off. You don't like, you know what I mean? Like the job comes first. And as I've grown and gotten older, I've realized, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Some job, jobs come and go. That's right. 
only thing that remains is your family. Yep. Uh, you know, so yep. um, Shannon and I, uh, years back, we we were just, you know, we, we sat down and discussed it and like this, this kind of a topic. And we came to a conclusion and we said, no matter where we're at, no matter what we're doing, um, if one of us calls the other or tries to contact the other, we pick up. We don't care if we're on the phone uh, or in a meeting with a boss. We like, no matter what, we're just going to pick up because like, like for us, our family comes before anything. And man, there's been times, Mark, where that has happened. And I, I will, I mean, it feels, it felt awkward at first because I wasn't used to it, but I, I, and I explained that to my employers, um, since then, uh, and, and, you know, my, my wife and I, we've worked out like, okay, like, you know, we're not just calling to say, I love you. Right. Like, right, like right. you know what I'm saying? This is like, no, this is important. If I'm calling you, it's important. Pick up the phone. Um, or if I'm texting you, it's important. Text me back. Even if it's something simple, like, Hey, can I give you a call back? Like just, just the pickup gives the other person like a sense of, okay, you know how serious this is. And you're going to get back to me as soon as possible. Right. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's been times where I've, been in a meeting with a boss and I could feel my phone vibrating and uh I I'll say, excuse me for a moment, I need to take this phone call. It's my wife. And I there there was actually a time I was on a stage like uh speaking and my wife called and I even told people like I said, I, I I'm sorry, but you gotta excuse me for a moment. Wow. My wife is calling. Wow. And I took the call. Um, and, you know, and I may, you know, I, I'm, it, and for each situation is different. Like, you know, the boss was like, huh, you know, kind of gave me a little like, huh, wow, okay. You know, I, and, you know, he didn't ask me about it later or anything, but it was more of just like, he gave me a look of like, that's pretty impressive. Uh, but I, I was scared, like, he's going to fire me. <laughs> but I was fine. <laughs> you know, and for the stage one, you know, I made a joke out of it and like, you know, I'm like, uh, you know, hey babe, I'm on stage. Yeah, say hi. <laughs> you know? Right, right. And 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 you know, she, she and you know, she she shared with me what it was about, and I was like, okay, I'll give you a call back right after this. So, but like in each instance, like you know, I've 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 had to stand firm because like I want to I want to be a man who takes care of his family. I want to be a man who puts his family um, above a lot of things, um, including my work. Like, but. But that doesn't mean that I have to skimp out on a job. I think I just need to communicate that. And so after I've been communicating that to people, um, it's been okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and 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 I think like for, like people listening are like, well, I don't want to make a practical thing out of that. I'm not a, I'm not an international like you know a national hockey player um, or you know a talented whatever making buku dollars where I can leave work. It's like, no, I think if you can generally just communicate that, you know, hey, there's going to be times where I might have to uh, uh, pick up a phone or I might ask for a day off because of the situation happening. I need to know that that's OK. You know, yeah. and I want you to know that, that, uh, that that's where I'm at. I'm not dilly dallying. I'm not just playing. I love you on the phone. I'm not, you know. Um, answering a question about what chicken I want tonight. Like, it's not that. This is a, it's a serious moment. You know what I mean? And I need you to understand that if I, if I do this, that, that it's okay. I'm, I'm a good employee and I work really hard. And so if people are thinking of a practical way to make that practical in their lives right yeah. now. No, I, it, listening to you share your experience takes me back into my, my corporate days. And I, I, I always would tell people, family is important. Family is my priority, and and so the, those words would come out of my mouth on on a regular basis. And and for the most part, I attempted to to live accordingly. Um, but but dude, I'd be lying if I if I said I never got wrapped up in the moment of whatever was going on at work, to the detriment of time with family. And, you Black know, it, it's just kind of, it's, it's this sense of duty to your, to your workmates. And, um, like, 
the work comes before all. And I, I never would have said that, never would have articulated that, never would have said that I even believed that. In fact, I would say the opposite. I never believed that work came before all, but there were enough times where I let it happen because I'm in the yeah. moment and th- this, this thing that we're dealing with, uh, call it an emergency, if you will, um, it felt like it was a life and death situation because of the way people were reacting. And so I just got wrapped up in it. And as a result, yeah. I didn't make it to where I said I was going to be. I didn't make it home when I said I was going to be home. I, I didn't answer the phone when, when the call came in, whatever it was. And, and Kristen and I didn't have the same type of system worked out like you and, and Shannon do. But dude, there were times where my actions were inconsistent with yeah. what what I believed to be true. Dis- yeah. yeah, and despite yep. my best attempts to create boundaries, ultimately that led to an exit. You know, my my the yeah. the fences that I had put around the non work life were obliterated by work, and I'm like, this is, I can't continue to live like this. I'm inconsistent. I'm out of yeah. alignment. This is not who I want to be. But even well before then, there were times where the work took priority. And and here's the stupid thing. It was not life and death situation. These emergencies were just manufactured um, anxiety within that, within that bubble that I was in. We were not fighting for uh, the Stanley Cup or a world championship. Like it was just... It was everyday nonsense. It was everyday crap yeah. that we were dealing with that somehow rose to the level of urgency that that caused me to set some of my priorities aside for for the job. And hmm. so, you know, just hearing you tell your story takes me back into numerous moments where I, I did the same thing. And... Um, so they're not and, they're not and, fatal, right? They're they're not fatal no, situations, no, no. but if we're not careful, they can become habits, and they send a message yeah. that um, you know the, the way we spend our time and our activities often says more than how we how we use our words, right? Like the yeah, the the yeah. doing is different than the saying. And, and anyway, um, I, I think yeah, you know what you, I'm saying. No, totally, man. I you know I just. Uh, uh, cause I want, I want to drill down a little bit here cause I think we're hitting on something. Um, you know, I've, I've made the same like agreement with my kids as well. If daddy is somewhere and you need to talk to daddy, um, for, you know, I want you to know that you can call me, you can text me, um, and whatever. And that I will answer you back. Uh, because I want you to know that I'm, I'm here for you. Like, you know, that, that you're important to me. Um, and I've said that, you know, and, and that's been good. And that's, that's, I think that's one area in where I, I'd say our family has won. But, you know, like just listening to what you're saying, like, like there's been balls dropped too. Like, you know, I, I was leaving one job and going to the other. Um, and one of so, a, a group of my, a group of people were asking my daughter, like, what's, what do you think of your daddy? like leaving this job and going and doing something else. And, uh, she, she was like, what, well, you know, one thing people don't get is that I get my daddy back. I am so mm. excited to get my daddy back. Wow. Um, for her, like I, I, like, you know, and, and I've talked with all my kids about this, just having these talks from, uh, just, man, man, we got to talk to our kids. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're like, well, you, 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 you would, you know, be working on something and I would want to play a game and you'd say, uh, not right now, maybe a little later and later turned from an hour to two hours to three hours. So I finally, I got bored. I went and did something else or, you know, um, the, 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 the family plan to do like some, some outing and I was supposed to be there, but then something came up on the schedule because of work and, uh, even though you said be there, like you went and did this instead, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and you know what I'm saying? It's, and it's like, for me, it's like, it's not, it's not the, um, 
it's not the, the the sword through the heart. It's the death by a thousand cuts. Yeah. I think it's what's happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's these little things, little moments where we think, oh, no, they don't, they won't, it's okay. It's all right. You know, like, I know I got to do this. I got to do this. This is a big project. This is my job. And, and our, our, what happens is our family gets left behind a little, a little more, a little more, you know what I mean? And a cut goes here, a cut goes here. And then our relationships and our family are broken to the point where, you know, I was, I was so shocked when she said that, but I think I was at a place too, where I can hear it. Mm -hmm. Um, but to the point where we're like, what do you mean? Like you get your daddy back. You know what I mean? Like, like I've been here all the time and you know, no, I haven't. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> the truth is, no, I haven't. You know, and so, you know, and I don't want to, like, I I'm, I always try to be careful, Mark, when we, we have these these um, sessions. Like, I, I don't want to put guilt trips on people um, because I know what that's like. You know, look, no one's perfect, man. No one gets this stuff, like, you know, downright pat and able to write 16,000 books on them and be like their <laughs> Yoda or fathers. Like, it's just not. Right. That's not, right. man. None of us are. We're all working but it I out. Hope, like, yeah, like, like, like here, here, I'm, I'm hoping what happens is like, you know, like that people become aware and it's, it's, you know, there's a, there's a saying that if your, if your brokenness leads you to content, then shame will follow. But if your brokenness leads you to like joy, that's something completely different. And so I'm hoping that like, like me sharing my heart in my my life and you doing the same like like this this broken area like it leads people to enjoy a little bit because there is a path to goodness like i have a great relationship with my daughter right now like she told me that and the the, the path that for that to lead to joy comes from repair and when she told me that like i immediately like you know we've been we've working on where we hang out man if i say i'm gonna be somewhere i'm just gonna do it dude i'm not I don't want to make any promises. I just want to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and, and I, you know, and that's what, and because our kids don't need broken words. You know what I'm saying? They need action behind the words. I love you. And the way, the way I've shown that to my daughter that I, I heard what she said, dude, we hang out every Monday night. Um, unless like, like seriously, um, unless something else like, you know, drastic happens, like every Monday night we hang out and we watch Monday night wrestling together. <laughs> like, like it's, it's our thing, man. Yeah. People, I tell people that like, what are you doing Monday night? Well, you know what? I um, uh, after I teach break dancing classes, I go hang out with my daughter. So, like, what are you doing? Uh, you know, uh, wrestling. It's like it's our thing, you know. But it's it's a place where it's consistent for her. You know what I'm saying? Um, consistently hanging with her. You know, and, and like if I say I'm going to do something, well, I'm 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 just going to do it. There's no promise. There's no need to check. Daddy, you promise? No, I'm just gonna show up and just consist consistently just showing up for these things, to relational building times. Like it, it, it's like it's like repairing all those other times that I jacked up and just said work comes before like my my family. Work comes before. and like now like my I don't see a cringe as much in my kids' eyes when, um. Like, you know, there's a conflicting of schedules because, like, they know that I'm just going to be like, well, you know what? You guys were here first. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're my family. Like, I'm just going to have to tell these people no. And there's less of a cringe as that, that conflict comes up because I've been building a trust with them that I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be there for my family. My family comes before this other stuff. Yeah. I, I think we say this about every episode, which means – we're still reminding ourselves and, and encouraging yeah. the listeners to remind themselves that the goal isn't perfection. Yeah. The the goal is to be no. engaged and actively growing and, and, and progressing. And, um, you know, you, that's just, it, it's just another, another reminder of that. The, the other thing that, yeah. that I hear or, or that I, that I'm thankful for that I realize is how how patient and forgiving our kids can be to to a oh, point yeah. you know there, there's a point at which yeah. we we can push them away and and damage the relationship but if if your if your pattern shifts from um from not being there whatever that looks like not being there to being there 
and and you start to to prove that your actions are lining up with with your words, right? Like just do, don't promise, yeah. just do. Yeah, your your kids your kids respond. You know, it's they they begin to mm-hmm. open up, and, and and it's as if it's like this. Okay, I got what I want. We're good. We're back on the right track. And I don't, I don't want to like brush things under the rug here or or overlook challenges. All I'm saying is that I, I think our kids are more gracious and forgiving than we realize yeah. when we begin to show them that they matter. Whether that's yeah, yeah. you know the captain of an NHL team taking time off to be be at the bedside of, of his sick child, or um, Alan spending Mondays with with his daughter doing doing what you do because it's it's what you do. Like there, there's a whole spectrum yeah. there, and I think there's space for all of us to play given our experiences and our passions and our relationships. Certainly. We're not saying chuck work and just go be a kid. Oh no. Right? Like there, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. the responsibility aspect of yeah. what we do. But I, I think we mm-hmm. are suggesting that that you have priorities in order. And in, in fact, I, I should even stop using the word priorities because it's kind of an oxymoron. But um, yeah. you, you should have the things that you value in order and, and your energy and your resources should line up against those things that you value. And, um, and, and what we're saying is, look, if, if you want to be about actively engaging as a father and and intentionally raising up your son to become a man, well, it's going to take focusing on him and, and choosing him and the family over the job when, when it's required. And, um, Boy, if you're willing to do that, the rewards are big, man. They are. Um, they look yeah. a little bit different, but you've experienced it in your relationship. I've experienced it in my relationships. Yes, maybe. Um, I got I got lots of thoughts. I could go on for a while. Maybe um, maybe you have to pass up that promotion, or maybe you have to move to yeah. to take a different job so that you can you can be off the road. And you don't have to travel all, all as much or. Whatever, maybe you have an opportunity yeah. to take your, your your kid to work with you and begin to introduce them. Yeah. I don't know. I could go on and on. Um, whatever yeah. your situation, you know, yeah. Whatever your situation is, there's ways to make it happen if you're willing to make that yeah. choice. Yeah, from the big leap to what you think that you just mentioned, I know it's probably like you know that could probably be like, <gasps> what do you mean, change jobs? Like, I mean, we only like honestly, Mark. Uh, like, I don't know if it works in your mouth, but I know being personally, you always like speak that is because I've, I've had to, I've had to make that choice and it is hard. It is a big leap. So yeah. from the big leap to like a small step, like whichever it is, like whatever is called for, for your situation, I would say like, start thinking about that. And what would it look like if you began to like, like did those things to build your relationship with your son? Yeah. Like what would it, what would it do? What would yep. it do for him? Yeah. What would it do for you? You know what I'm saying? And so anyway. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It's uh just just another reminder to stay engaged and to yeah. to figure it out, you know, whatever that looks yeah. like, figure it out and be willing to to take a maybe this is a good way to say it, to take a risk on family. You know, we, we yeah. often think yeah. about the the career risk and the potential and and, and money and resources and, yeah. and accumulation. But what if what if you take that risk on the family? Um, my yeah. guess is you're gonna be you're gonna be paid back in currency that matters way more in the end than you know sure. the, the, the dollar bill. Sure, 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 absolutely. And it's good. Good combo. Yeah. Good combo. Thanks, Nick Felino, for the inspiration. Uh, we kind of drifted off yeah, of off of uh, Major League Sports because most of us don't live in that world. Um, but it, <laughs> it was a it was a good reminder. Like even he can do it, right? Even yeah. he can yeah. do it when the when yeah. the time is called for. If he can make that choice, we can we can make that choice on a regular basis. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, amigo. That was good. Appreciate it. Listeners, appreciate you uh, you staying with us. Um, if you want to engage with us, you know, as we often suggest, we're, we're 
We're out on the website, thenextmanup.com, or our Facebook page, The Next Man Up One. Or if you want to email us directly, you can get us at feedback at thenextmanup.com. We'd love to hear from you. Questions, suggestions, ideas, comments, feedback, whatever it is. And if you're an iTunes listener and user, feel free to head out there and tell us what you think and uh, let others know what you think with a rating and with a review. So that would be that would be great. Love to hear from you. And uh, Alan, always a pleasure. And um, once again, I'm looking forward to the next one already. Absolutely. All right, brother. You take care. Likewise. Adios. Hey, listeners. Thanks for journeying with us on this Next Man Up podcast. You know, we would love to hear from you. Maybe you have a question or an idea, perhaps a topic for us to consider. If that's you and you want to reach out to us, you can get us at feedback at the nextmanup.com. That's feedback at the nextmanup.com. Again, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you.